well hello there and welcome back to my channel and honestly i need a welcoming back too because and for those of you who do not know who i am my name is amshu and i am a third year medical student from bangalore and for those of you who do me know me you get the first joke i am super inconsistent with this but anyway let's hope to get better and without any further ado let's get on with this video Well, this video is going to be a little different from what we usually do as I know the final exams are approaching for the first years and I know how confusing and lost one might be while facing the university exams for the first time while in first year. So, I'm just going to share a few tips that might help you guys a little prepare a little better, a little easier and that that help me as well in order to get a distinction and then hopefully you benefit from it too. Well, there are two aspects to this. One is your preparation, and one is how well you write your paper in the university exam. So, starting with the preparation part, I always think it's better to be on track, be consistent, and study from day one. But I know it's often not possible to do this and keep up with your daily classes and daily completion of work. So, even if you're not able to do this, I want to tell you that it's still not late. You can still prepare well. You can still give your best, and you can still. aim for a distinction in your final exams well anyway let's start from the top anatomy physiology as well as biochemistry three major subjects that you should be facing the exams for in first year so let's talk resources starting with anatomy the one book that most almost all students use is bdc bd charasia for gross anatomy and we know there's so many subsections in anatomy that is gross anatomy general anatomy histology as well as embryology so i suggest you to use bdc for gross anatomy and you can refer to vishram singh for the pictures and diagrams and the pictorial representation of everything and for embryology i suggest you to use vishram singh and for gross anatomy vishram singh as well and for histology you can use indrajit singh i think this should suffice and be adequate for you to be prepared for your university exams and moving on to physiology uh, there are there is gk pal ak jain as well as sambulingam whichever book you are using i think should be okay i personally used ak jain there are a lot of flow charts and points that will help you prepare well for the exam but i think gk pal is better so whatever to your comfort do look it up and then do take up the book and moving on to biochemistry there is vasudevan satyanarayan as well as aram prasad and i personally think satyanarayan is easy to read as well as good for understanding and there is adequate information that you might need to understand the concept as well as be able to write the exam so i think use satyanarayan and yeah that's it for the resources and talking about the subjects well here are some general tips that will aid your preparation towards the final exams the first and the foremost thing that i think you should do especially in the last two months or three months of your final exams times when you have the study holidays is print out these last 10 20 year question papers of the of the universities so of each subject anatomy biochemistry and physiology so you keep it handy so you get to look at all the questions and then you actually notice the trend of the repetition of the questions and how often the same questions are repeated and then you'll keep revising the same things over and over and over again until you perfect it and until you know how well you can write this on the paper and one more thing that i've noticed is some students really prepare hard study well but they're not able to you know write the question paper write the answer sheet in in a proper format and in a way that will fetch them the marks that they deserve so i just want to tell you that if you're aiming for a distinction write how you write the paper in the exam is as important as your preparation as well so i'm just going to give you a few tips as to how you can do that so i'm just going to go subject wise and let's start with anatomy and one thing that students fail to do as well as me what i didn't realize the importance of is i kept studying gross anatomy gross anatomy gross anatomy i didn't realize that histology embryology and general anatomy too like carry a lot of marks in the paper and these are to be honest very easy marks that you can get if you devote some time for each of these as well so do not make this mistake do study histology embryology as well as general and obviously your gross anatomy being the main area of focus 
do study histology and embryology because you need to know those diagrams, those hematoxyl and eosin diagrams for histology. Do practice all of those and then know a few features for each histo diagram. And embryology too, you need to learn all the diagrams, all the main, usually the main topics of embryology is asked. So just go through the topics of contents and then just, you know, just study all the diagrams and then you'll be able to write it in the paper. So apart from this, uh, coming to gross anatomy, uh, it's es extremely essential to draw diagrams. Suppose, let's take for example, they ask you a question regarding head of pancreas, the structure surrounding it and the anatomy of it. I'll just give you a brief idea as to how you can write this in the paper. So what you should first do is go through the theory part in BDC regarding the same topic that the question has been asked on. And then you will notice there'll be so many diagrams relating to that. So when we take head of pancreas, just start with the introduction, just write the size and the extent of pancreas, where it's located, and then move on to the main part of the question that is head of the pancreas. So as you can see in the textbook, there'll be relations to the anterior, posterior. So that's how you learn the diagram and then you'll be able to easily picture pictureize it and then be able to write it in the paper. And the theory part will come automatically when once you make picture your main focus. And then you can easily write the points regarding that, like anterior relations, posterior relations, lateral, medial, and superior, inferior. So it will be easy to see the pictures, draw the pictures, learn the pictures. That's what gets the attention of the examiner usually. And then one more high yielding tip that might impress the examiner when they're correcting your paper is just write two, three points regarding the clinical features of the asked question, like suppose head of pancreas, the question is head of pancreas. So you just write the head of pancreas is a common place, a common site of carcinoma and causes obstructive jaundice, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is usually given in a pink box in BDC. So I think it's extremely essential for you to just write two, three points, even though they have not asked in order to fetch you more marks. So that's a gist about how you can go about for anatomy. One is extremely important, the pictures, pictures, pictures. All main questions that you see from the past year questions, make sure you see the pictures regarding all of that. Let it be lateral wall of nose or pancreas or abdominal organs or chest, pleura, lungs, anything they ask. There'll always be a picture associated with it and it's extremely important for you to learn it so that it's easier for it, easier for you and then you can draw it easily and then that'll help you fetch more marks. And then of course the theory part will, you have to read it as well. And then histology, embryology, make sure you draw the diagrams properly, practice it, you know all the features, make sure you label them properly and then use the appropriate colors. And coming to general anatomy, make sure you go through all the general topics and you don't leave that out as well. And next, moving on to the subject physiology. And I think for physiology, it's extremely important for you to understand the concept and the topic. And to do so, you can watch so many videos on YouTube. There are really great videos on YouTube that actually uh, explain how the mechanism works. And you can do that for your understanding. And apart from that, the book that you refer to, make sure you're able to understand it, make sure you're able to read it, and make sure you're able to understand easily from it. And moving on to writing the paper for physiology, uh, I think one more important thing for physiology as well, just go through all the past 10 year question papers. You'll see the most important questions, most important topics, most important 10 markers, 5 markers and so on. That'll help you just repeatedly revise the same things over and over again, just for the preparation. Part. And some of the typical questions that they ask in physiology, as we know, is the HCL secretion mechanism and the factors that regulate cardiac output and so on. So for these, what you should incorporate for physiology, I think is to incorporate writing flowcharts in your answer sheet. Uh, teachers usually don't want to read a bunch of theory points, just theoretical points, you know. So I think it's better to make flowcharts when you're preparing, like in the process of your preparation when you study this topic called regulation of cardiac output. So you see there are so many factors that regulate it, right? So you make a flowchart saying heterometric regulation, homometric regulation, and then you make the same points underneath all of it. So that's how you're supposed to write in the question, in the answer sheet as well. So this will be better for the examiner and better for you while writing it as well. You'll save time, you'll be more efficient and you'll be better at answering the question. So for physiology point of view, I think that's it. Just make sure you write flowcharts Make sure you write clinical features as well, just clinical aspect of something that they ask. And then make sure you go over all the important topics again and again so that you don't mess it up. And then make sure you go through all the minor topics as well that might they, they might ask for three marks or five marks. 
and that's it for physiology and then moving on to biochemistry for biochemistry whatever book that you're using make sure you're able to read it again the same thing applies here as well and then get a print out or hard copy or soft copy whatever is better for you of all the 10 past 10 or 15 year question papers of the final exams so you know what has been repeatedly asked and for biochemistry i know people usually worry about metabolism chapters that is metabolism of carbohydrates fats lipid, lipids uh, proteins amino acids and i think that might be really hard for you guys when you do it in the last minute so make sure you practice all the cycles all the metabolic cycles pathways again and again and then make sure you know the cofactors the enzymes properly as well and when you write this in the paper make sure you like box it or encircle it or bubble it so that you know you draw their attention more towards it and then make sure you know all of them properly and while doing this don't do not tend to forget the smaller chapters like vitamins minerals they are also equally important and like, equally essential for you to study and then again for biochemistry make sure you write two three clinical features clinical topics clinical syndromes associated with a certain topic that they ask this will indeed fetch you more marks and you will be able to be prepared much better so at the end of the day make sure you repeatedly revise and then be consistent with your preparation practice all diagrams flow charts pictures the way you write small small points and then make sure you underline underline major points that you want them to see and then make sure you use colors for anatomy like red blue and then green for ligaments and everything and then hopefully if these tips help you i'm pretty sure you'll be able to get a distinction as well anyway these are just a few things that i thought might help you guys and then definitely that did help me as well and then if you did benefit from it even the slightest bit do give this video a big thumbs up and then subscribe for more it would help me a lot and then yeah all the best for all your preparations i'm pretty sure you'll all prepare well and then pass your exams with flying colors and anyway i'll let you guys go back to your preparation and i'll catch you sometime soon hopefully until then bye bye and take care